Yeah, I know. You probably clicked on this video thinking one day scientists say omega-3s are good for my health and now this joker is going to tell me otherwise. Well, let me set your mind at ease. I'm not about to contradict the science. However, keep in mind that science requires nuance and I'm going to show you how being careful with your omega-3 consumption can yield the best of all worlds, including avoiding some of the heart issues that are linked to omega-3 consumption. So what issues are we talking about here? The consumption of omega-3 fats is not only linked, but very likely causative to heart conditions like atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a condition wherein your heart in a particular section called the atria has an abnormal rhythm. So you can imagine that if part of your heart has a different rhythm than the rest of your heart, it can cause major issues. So how do omega-3s contribute? Well, according to several reviews, along with my own investigations analyzing multiple studies, omega-3s are linked to this atrial fibrillation. But to be fair, some analyses dispute these findings. Don't worry though, that will be explained. So let's go forward with the assumption that omega-3s are problematic in that regard. The thought here, according to all these researchers, is that omega-3 fats are incorporated into the cell membrane, which changes the behavior of the cell membrane in a manner of speaking. I don't think any researchers would actually argue that point, even if they don't believe that omega-3s cause atrial fibrillation. Omega-3s, once incorporated into the cell membrane of the heart cells, called cardiomyocytes, change the fluidity of the membrane, which means it makes the membrane less stiff. But we're not talking about cells like they have a creaky back. Sometimes more stiffness is a good thing, except for your poor back, of course. Anyway, functionally, it changes how molecules that influence how the cell behaves interact. For example, your cell membrane is littered with channels that allow or disallow ions across the cell membrane in and out of the cell. These ions play a major role in the activation of the cell to contract, like heart muscle cells to contract. Recently, it's been proposed that several huge channels, like piezo channel, in the membrane have to maintain a particular shape in the cell membrane. And when these channels are embedded into the membrane, their leaflets, the, the sides, are bent downwards, closing the channel and disallowing sodium and calcium into the cell. However, with too much omega-3 incorporated into the cell membrane, the membrane flattens, allowing the channel to open more readily, thereby letting sodium and calcium ions that should be kept outside of the cell into the cell. This could prematurely activate the cell to contract, creating an arrhythmia. I didn't want to detract from the education, but piezo definitely makes it seem like the channel was named by an Italian waving their hands around piezo. Anyway, back at it. That's one of the channels of interest, but Omega-3s can influence the activation and inactivation of many of these types of channels. We see that directly evidenced here in this study. Full disclosure, they aren't using cardiomyocytes, but using a model system. But the same idea applies. The researchers added omega-3 fats to the media, the liquid that's feeding these cells. And then they measured the voltage changes inside the cells while stimulating the cells to activate. Remember, that's performed by the exchange of ions. Up top, the left side is the control condition, so no omega-3 exposure. And the right side is the omega-3 condition. The lower the lines, which are electrical current traces from a field of physiology called electrophysiology, the more the ions have entered the cell. Clearly, there's a difference between the two conditions, but evidence further below is the quantification, with the black dots being the omega-3 condition and the black boxes is the control. Again, all you really need to register is that there are differences. Clearly, omega-3 condition changes the channel that we've been talking about in some way to influence ion exchange. Or the researchers also indicate that exposure to omega-3s can change the gene expression of channel proteins, the same ones that allow and disallow ions across the cell membrane by as much as 50% in this model system. And yet, 
There are also many mechanisms by which omega-3s provide benefit, like once they're incorporated into the cell membrane, they influence the internal cell signaling as well. These reviewers point out that once omega-3s are incorporated into the cell membrane, they can be interacted with membrane-bound proteins that transfer signals throughout the cell, making the shape shifting activity of these proteins more efficient, smoother. Or alternatively, omega-3s compete with omega-6 fats for the cell membrane placement, thereby reducing the amount of omega-6s available to be turned into pro-inflammatory molecules like oxygenase family molecules. There's a lot more to that story too, but how do we square the difference between the omega-3's positive effects and potentially negative effects? Well, look, there's a likely reason why there's some debate on if omega-3s really are a heart risk and why so many studies indicate them to be a net benefit for our cardiovascular health. Fascinatingly, both can be true. Look at this. Notice the U curve there? It's based on dose. So it ultimately likely comes down to if you don't consume sufficient omega-3s, you are increasing your heart disease risk. And if you consume too much, you're at a different heart disease risk. So what's too much? It's not entirely clear, but usually consuming multiple grams is getting into that upper threshold. Either way, the takeaway here isn't that omega-3s are detrimental, quite the opposite, they provide benefit against various forms of heart disease, but the dose likely plays the sliding scale on the overall risk-benefit ratio. If you want to know more about the different ways that omega-3s can be beneficial, don't shy away from this linked video.